Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie, it's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, this is pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, hello, hello. It's another glorious day, my tea sippers, and you know what time it is. I hope you have all of your comfort together because it's time to dish the tea. And you're dish the darlings. Ha! With big news. My baby's babies deserve to have a better life. Sometimes I feel like we got snakes and leeches in our backyard. Some people say we got gangsters and hustlers in the state and White House. But what I do know is we got killers and dealers in our streets. This whole world ain't a friend of mine. Find a way to get a piece of We got bombs in Boston, 12 year old dead in Cleveland. It's a fact, he was black. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Three year old little girl shot dead in the streets of the dream. For those of you going through the songs for you, you gotta work hard just to pay your bills. But this world wants more than you have to feel. You can give your whole heart and get nothing in return. This world calls it lessons learned. Go through struggles 
We gotta deal with pain. This life, we gotta deal with rain. And hello, 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 I say to all of my listeners out there at Blog Talk Radio Land, here in the glorious United States and across the globe. Hello to all of my children over there in Germany and Italy and France, the Caribbean island, Beijing, China. Um, let's see, there was another one over there that's overseas, the Ukraine, that's it. And we just got Ukraine listeners, so how about that? Thank you all for your love and your support, honey. It's another glorious Wednesday, my tea sippers, honey. And I know you have all your couples together because you know what time it is, darling. It's time to dish tea. You're dishing tea, darling. <laughs> With Big Meat. Yes, baby. We're coming to you today uh, live from the American Intercontinental University where I attend classes here. And um, I'm in the student lounge right now, um, coming to you live. And it's another Don't Come Out of a Bag Wednesday. And you get to be my co-host, or so whatever's on your mind, you can talk about it right here and right now. The number to call in is 347-205-9183. That's 347-205-9183. Press the number one. That's one time. You will hear the prompt to say you are now in the host queue. When you hear that, that means that you are here, I got you, your hand has been raised, and I will bring you in at the appropriate time. Okay? So having said that, my darlings, I want you to come on in and join in on the fun, honey, because we've got a couple of things that is going to be very, 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 very that way today. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes again. Let me put my disclaimer here. I better say it now, honey. Dishing Tea with Big Meat is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters that you hear on this program are not intended for children or anyone who is not mature and or responsible enough to handle the subject or situation at hand. So your listening discretion is advised. I will repeat. Dishing Tea with Big Meat is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters that you hear on this program are not intended for children or anyone who is not mature and or responsible enough to handle the situation or the subject at hand. So your listening discretion is advised. Now, if you're new to the show, honey, you're going to find out very quickly, honey, I have a potty mouth. I make no excuses for it. So, honey, uh -uh, at 46 years of age, I have earned the right to every 3, 4, 5, 17, 52, 197 syllable and or letter words that comes out of my mouth. Honey, I don't know what bag I'm coming out of, but just know I'm coming out of one, okay? <laughs> so, please govern yourselves accordingly, my darlings, because if you are at work, now is the time for you to either put your headphones on and or turn your radio volumes down to a respectful level. If you have children in the room, honey, now is the time to put them in the other room with the other flat screen and let them watch Dora or SpongeBob or Bert and Ernie or uh, Barney or somebody, honey, Kate and Allie, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy. I don't give a damn, honey, because now is the time for the grown and sexy, honey, to become the seasoned and sophisticated. You understand? All right. Now, I'm trying to get the tea room open again. I don't know what's going on. It's not connecting, so give me a few minutes, and I'll let you know when the tea room uh, is open. Okay, for those of you who are listening by computer, you're more than welcome to uh, chime on in there, okay? So going through all of this, my darlings, my darlings, my darlings, again, I want you to, to come on in. You call in at 347-205-9183. That's 347 347- Two zero five nine one eight three. Yes. Okay. A couple of announcements for you, honey. We are here in Atlanta. This is coming up on Labor Day weekend, honey. We have Black Gay Pride going on down here this weekend. 
We have Dragon Con coming on down here this weekend. Um, we also have um, the SEC football thing. It's a college football thing, I believe it is. A uh, skate-a-thon is going on. And their pray tale is uh, talk that um, Freaknik is trying to come back. <laughs> Ain't that nothing? So, okay. I ain't going to even go there with that one. But uh, we got a lot that's going on down here in the ATL. So if you're on your way down here, my darlings, please know, honey, your best bet is going to be riding Marta because traffic is going to be on grip lock down here. Okay? Or if you're going to be uh, traveling out and about or whatever, uh, make sure that your hotels and stuff are, are centrally located so that you can walk to your events and carrying on. Okay? That's the first the first thing. And the second thing is family ties are shattered and destroyed when fraternal twins Danielle and Eric confront one another on the issues of betrayal, infidelity, and HIV. My sisters, what would you do if you found out that your fiance of seven years have been having an affair with your twin brother for five of those seven years. Do you find out that your brother is HIV positive? And then you find out that you are pregnant and HIV positive. How about that? No time for the pain. Yes, that's right. And Detroit, we are looking to bring no time for the pain back to the Motor City, my hometown. Looking to do this for June 2017 to celebrate Juneteenth and also to have a couple of surprises there with you. We were looking to do a Kwanzaa in June celebration as well. Yes, that's right, honey. So please go to the website, www.dishingtea.com, for more information on how you can become a sponsor by either partnering with us. Um, we have a number of, of, of avenues where you can partner you could get merchandises. We have T-shirts and, and coffee mugs and things of that nature, or tea mugs, if you will, <laughs> for your uh, enjoyment. That way you can help us to fund and get the money in the kitty, baby, because we got to get this going in the kitty. Okay, but again, for more information, go to dishingtea.com. Okay, click on the tab that says no time for the pain, and all of that information will be right there. Okay. So that there is that. Now, uh, what I am going to do, I've been having a lot. I've, I've got to get to the doctor because I've been having not necessarily vocal problems, but today it seems as though my throat is giving me just a couple of little problems today. Like I'm coming down with a cold or something. But uh, I have to go look at that because I've looked up something and I didn't like what I saw. Um, when I uh, did some, you know, I went on uh, Doctor M M D Web or whatever, Web M D. That's it, and, and looked up some 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 medical stuff and the symptoms that I'm having, honey, and what they say it could possibly be. It, no, we ain't even claiming none of that. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, go over here. Let me get some form of libation so I can have something to drink. And then when we come back, we're going to get right into this show. Again, if you want to call in, 347 205 9183 is the number to call. 347 205 9183. Press the number one one time, and it lets me know you want to talk. And we will get right into this, honey. But, but we got a few things that's on my mind. Uh huh. I'll discuss that when we get back. Right now, let me take a little commercial break. Let me get my sponsors in here to say a couple of words, and then we're going to get right into this, okay? Talk to you in just a minute. Double Exposure Media Relations is a full-service public relations, marketing, and artist development firm specializing in urban culture and lifestyle. Spearheaded by the Henry Hingers of hip-hop, Mr. Angelo Ellaby, Double Exposure serves to educate its clients about the dollars and cents of the music industry. For more information about Double Exposure Media Relations, call 201-224-6510. 201-224-6510. Double Exposure Media Relations.
Trig Laboratories manufactures premium sexual wellness and consumer health care products and is the parent company of Wet International Incorporated, one of the world's best-selling lines of personal lubricants and intimacy products. We carry a large variety of personal and flavored lubricants, flavored heating massage lotions, and aromatherapy heating massage oils. Whether you need a little or a lot, WET has you covered. Our line of high-quality, innovative, and unique products are formulated using only the finest ingredients at our FDA-approved facility, meeting the strictest manufacturing standards. WET is available worldwide at specialty stores and online retailers and at pharmacies nationwide. For more information or to find a retailer near you, log on to www.stayswetlonger.com. Trig Laboratories. We create fun, quality, trusted products to innovate your intimacy. Maggie Lee's Community Center offers a unique array of programs designed to improve the lifestyle and well-being of the community. Located at 7700 Puritan Avenue in Detroit, Maggie Lee's Community Center specializes in child care and latchkey services, as well as senior citizen activities and block club functions. For more information about Maggie Lee's Community Center, call 313-737-9042. Maggie Lee's Community Center, giving the people a chance to show how much they have to contribute.
And hello, hello, hello. We are back. Thank you for joining me with your time, and thank you for your love and your support. If you're just tuning in and want to come in on the conversation, the number to call is 347-205-9183. That's 347-205-9183. If you want to join in, just press the number one one time. You will hear the prompt say you are now in the host queue, and I will bring you in at the appropriate time. So come on in, honey, because you get to be my co-host today as we are in another installment of Don't Come Out of a Bag Wednesday. Today I call this day My Country Tears of Thee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, sweetheart, we're going to get into a whole big old thing up in here, and I want you guys to weigh in on it, the way how you feel. No judgment here, but if you come out of a bag, sugar, do know I'm going to come out of a bigger bag. You understand? <laughs> We're going to talk about whatever you want right here and right now. Um, You can either bring in a new topic if you like, or you could pick uh, and join in with what what it is I'll be talking about for at least a few minutes. Um, But we're going to get into this whole big old debate or debacle, if you will, about the NFL player Colin uh, Kaepernick, uh, whose decision to sit down during the uh, national anthem before he played uh, has become such a controversy here in the United States and oh excuse me and across the country uh, to where uh, it has brought about all kinds of discussion and uh, I'm going to share with you what I had put up on uh, on my Facebook wall. Uh, in just a few moments about this because it, it's 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 something, okay. Uh, my qu- the questions are why is there so much outrage for such a peaceful protest? Now, you know I'm gonna get with y'all on this is just because now just a few moments ago when we had the Black Lives Matter carrying on, y'all want to sit there and insist. That these children were violent, and yes, usually any time we have a, a people protesting in the streets or whatever, we always get that part of the element um, intertwined in the peacefulness that want to just cause corruption. So, um, yeah, sometimes we do get those who want to be violent and carrying on, um, and it's only then that y'all want to make noise about it. Now, when the children are rallying because they don't won the basketball or football game or lost the, a big game or whatever. I know children get to flipping over cars and burning up shit. Don't nobody say nothing about that. That's a different story. But with the protesting and carrying on, honey, with folks that are in, they are in peaceful protest, um, you guys want to make an issue of that because you're looking for the violence. This man sat down. He didn't bother nobody. You know, it was his prerogative. He did not want to stand during the national anthem. This was not the first time that he's done it. Um, he's done it at several other games, two or three games, from what I'm understanding. And he just sat down. He did not stand at, at the singing of the anthem. But why has this caused so much outrage? What about his peaceful protest or his particular stance has become so disrespectful? Now, the question is, do you think that he has a point with what it is he was protesting? Do you think he has a point? And here's the bigger question. Would you take this particular stance, or how would you allow your protest to be heard and or noticed, if you're going to protest at all? Because we got some who just sit back and, you know, bitch them on the complaint from the sidelines and may not get out there. Some may not want, may not think that, you know, that's their particular route. They may come up with other ways to want to peacefully protest. So my question is, what is your way? If this wasn't your way and you felt that he could have done something else, what what should he have done or could he have done? Okay. Now, this particular uh, debacle or debate or happenstance has brought about a bigger conversation. Are you guys actually familiar with the national anthem? Hmm? Did you know that the national anthem has four stanzas to it or four verses to that particular song? The part that everybody sings, honey, or have sing because it's such a difficult song to sing, that particular part is only the first verse of that song. (laughs) 
There are three more verses to that song, honey. Yes. And it has become a, an issue of discussion because of the origin of the song. And I'm going to get into that in just a few minutes. Okay. Because some folks are believing that this song was written and it was a racist or white supremacist song. I will share the lyrics with you. Okay. Uh, again, we can come out of a bag today. Uh, you are my co-host. Uh, but if you come out of a bag, child, for real, if you come out of a bag, I'm coming out of a bigger bag. Okay. So, like I said, we could talk about whatever you want to talk about. The number to call is 347-205-9183. Press the number one one time. That lets me know you have something to say. Now, here are a couple other things that are on my mind. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Pastor. Um, his name is Ken Atkins, Okay. He's an African-American gentleman or a Native American of, with African ancestry. Um, he was very vocal and has been about his particular stance on the LGBT community. Okay, you know, he's a traditional Christian and things, and, you know, fags and dykes and things going to burn in hell and, you know, all of that. Um, most uh, recently, he was very, very vocal about the tragedy in Orlando, okay, where he went public and stated that what happened in Orlando, honey, he did not see any victims. He didn't see victims. He felt like they got what they deserve, and this was God's punishment for those children who were killed and injured in Orlando. Well, darlings, 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 I have such an interesting twist here. The lovely old pastor, honey, has just been arrested, okay, and he was arrested for what? Child molestation, okay, and according to the, the news story, honey, he was, molest, uh, he was molesting a young boy, and this happened um, about six years ago um, in 2010, and according to the accounts, that this has happened in the church, at the boy's home, uh, in the pastor's car, and et cetera, et cetera. And now it's coming to light. So this pastor has been arrested. And so now, you know, as fate would have it, here comes that ultimate question, honey, that you throw back in his face. Did he deserve this? Is this what he deserves? Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He has a wife, and his wife, who is also the co-pastor of the church, you know, she's very prayerful and things and said that this has gotten misconstrued and it's been taken out of hand in context or whatever, and she believes that he's going to be found innocent of all of that. However, uh, you know, the old saying is people who live in glass houses should not throw stones. Uh, but here we are. We have all of this going on, and uh, – that's where we are. So with all Pastor Atkins, and how do you feel about that when you have uh, the church children who come out and have been so vocal? We've had that happen with many, 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 many of these so-called Christian shows just and carrying on where they, come, they, they preach fire and brimstone from their pulpit. But then they get caught up in a web of deceit and carrying on, honey. You see what happened to Eddie Long and a number of other children who get caught up, and not just caught up, but they get caught up in sexual scandals, and it becomes a point of interest. So what are your thoughts on that, okay? And I use the word scandal, so speaking of scandals, child, I got to let y'all know this, okay? <laughs> so that way y'all heard it from me, and you won't sit up there and get all that way trying to blow me up in this, that, and the other. Do you guys remember about four years ago, uh, three or four years ago, when I had uh, the picture scandal that had hit the Internet, me uh, somewhat naked and things with my champagne bottle strategically placed and this, that, and the other, and it hit the net, and it had went viral across the country, well, across the world, actually. Well, darling, it comes to find out those pictures have resurfaced. <laughs> I got a, uh, a text message or an email from someone on Facebook 
who asked me had I seen these pictures. And I said, okay. And I was trying to figure out, you know, exactly what they had done to the picture, because, of course, I know the picture. Well, come to find out, according to the captions, that picture is on some, is the show on MTV called Jokes or MTV Jokes or something. And I don't know what had happened. It was just a still frame shot. I don't know if this is an actual show or if this is a website or whatever. But, honey, I'm back in the scandal again because that picture has fucking resurfaced. Okay, um, so I want you guys, I'm bringing it to your attention now so that you guys are already know I know about it um, and carry it on. I'm not, I'm not going to sit down there. I'm not going to fight with it or whatever. I still stand behind my pictures because I took them. <laughs> okay, and we're going to call that Grace. Um, so... Having said all that, I just wanted you guys to know that. So if you see the picture or whatever, I already know about it. Don't come blowing me up or whatever. I already know, okay? Um, now, if you see it distorted or whatever, that may be a whole different point or, or whatever. But it's just uh, it's just really, 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 really interesting. I guess this is a real show. I'm, I'm Googling MTV jokes, and apparently they have something. It must be real or something. Um, yeah, it comes on at 11 o'clock at night on MTV. Well, how about that? I'm going to have to go check this out. Or somebody, if if you've seen this, if you know me, you know what I look like. <laughs> uh, and you've seen the show, get back with me and let me know or whatever so I can find out in what context they put all this shit in or whatever. And then we'll go from there. So, yeah, honey, it's, yeah. <laughs> So that there is that. But last week when I was with you guys, I told you I wanted you to get into this whole, uh, this 33 questions thing, right? It's 33 questions that white people have for white people, right? I came across this child. You know what? I'm just going to play it. Y'all stand by. Listen to this, and then we get into it. Why do you assume only other races like fried chicken? I love fried chicken. It should be a white person stereotype because of me. Why do we make it so we only have pumpkin in the fall? I want pumpkin all the time. Why can't most white people dance? Seriously, like, is it genetic or something? Do we have, like, stiff hips or, like, two left feet? I can dance. Why do you get so annoyed when other people don't speak English? English is hard. We have silent Ks. Why do we get so excited to brag on Instagram that we went to this really cool, authentic cultural festival, even though we went with all of our white friends? Why do white people spray tan until they turn orange? Can't you just be comfortable in your own body? I'm just saying. It's not tan. It's orange. Why do you think that since you've seen five seasons of The Wire, you're a cultural expert? Why do you believe everything you see on TV when it comes to other races? Why do we get upset when a TV show becomes diverse, even though diverse usually just means two to three people of color? Why do you assume movies with white stars are automatically more relatable than movies with people of color? People of color have had to relate to white characters for all of cinematic history. Why is Viola Davis the first black woman to win an Emmy for Best Actress? Why aren't we complaining that the Oscars and other award shows are like all white? It's just like white people congratulating other white people on being white. Everybody should be represented. Why don't we know the difference between appropriation and appreciation? Why can't we figure out how to make our own pop culture, our own slang, our own cool clothes, instead of stealing other people's cool clothes and then saying that they are our cool clothes? Why are white people obsessed with Wes Anderson? Why would you ever say thug life? It's a bad life. What do you have against seasoning and spiciness? Didn't Christopher Columbus discover America looking for spices? Why are casseroles our thing? Why do you try to avoid confrontation at all costs? Why is it crazy that I'm white and I have a big butt? Why do you make such a big deal when somebody doesn't want to hike? Why do you keep talking about reverse racism? That is not a thing. We are the people in power. Racism is about oppression. Sorry, white people have not been oppressed. Why are you too afraid to speak up when someone says something racist? Why do we think that having one friend of color means that nothing we say or do could possibly ever be racist? Why does being half white automatically make my commentary on white culture only half true? I am just as much white as I am Mexican. Why do you believe that black lives matter? 
means that your life doesn't matter. Every life matters. It's just that one has a harder time living. Why do you get offended when you see a table full of black people, but not when you see a lunchroom full of white people? Why do you always ask to have a white people club? You already do. It's a student union. It's primarily white. They have a black student union because you don't represent them well. Why do you see the success of people of color as a threat to you? You know that a two-minute video about whiteness isn't reverse racism, right? Two minutes about whiteness, Hundreds of years of systemic oppression? Yeah, I think we can deal with this. Why are we upset about immigrants when we were the first immigrants? And we were white people running away from other white people. That kind of shows you how bad white people can be. <laughs> that last line just kills me. <laughs> He said that we were white people running away from other white people. <laughs> that gets me. So now, having heard that, what do you guys think about that? Okay. Are those questions legitimate? And, and does this help uh, solidify a lot of the questions that we have about racism in this country? Having these kinds of discussions coming from uh, anglo saxon Asian counterparts or whatever to themselves, do you think that this will get the discussion off the ground? You know, uh, it's something that I had when I first heard this baby, I still cackle because I think that we have there's a, there's a lot of validity in there. You know, what are your thoughts? Three four seven two zero five nine one eight three. Now, here's the ticket. That's 33 questions white people have for white people. Here are 27 questions that black folks have for black folks. Take a listen. Why is it so hard to be on time? Like, why does 5 to 10 always become 20 to 30? If my dab is on fleek, am I lit? Why is it a problem if I like anime? Why do black people look at your shoes before they greet you? Why are we more likely to engage in the new dance trend than we are to get involved in politics or opening a business. How did watermelon become our thing? Like, everybody should love watermelon. Why do you get upset when I don't like a black celebrity? Race aside, some people are just terrible. Why do we call each other the N-word, but get vehemently upset when a white person uses the N-word? It drains my soul to hear the word, and I just don't understand how people who have any understanding of history can use that word. Why is my natural hair? The hair that grows out of my head, seen as a political statement. Why do we think people with light skin look better than people with dark skin? Do you really believe that black is beautiful? Or is that just something you say because it sounds cool? Why do some black people say you're pretty for a dark skin girl? When that is said to me, it still makes me feel like the ugliest little black thing. Why do some black men only date white women? Why is it okay for black men to date white women, but not okay for a black woman to date outside her race? Why do you protest Black Lives Matter? And then tear each other down in the next breath. Why do we say that we don't want to be seen as a monolith, but then try to take people's black cards away for not liking something that's supposedly black? Why are we so quick to support a non-black owned business, but then hesitate when it's a black owned business? I mean, is there a cutoff time for this whole homophobia thing in the black community? Because I'm really looking forward to that. Why is growing up without a father so common in our race? Why don't we like to confront our mental health issues? Therapy is such a wonderful and magical place. Why is there a checklist for being black? Why is being educated considered a white thing? Why can't I love school and also be black? Why do I have to be mixed? in order to have long hair. Why do you think well-off black people don't know what it means to be black? Black isn't only defined by adversity. Why do some black people say, oh, I have Native American in my family, in order to feel interesting or more valuable than other black people around them? Why can't we just acknowledge that there are a bunch of different types of black people walking around and they're all amazing and unique and special in their own way? We within the black community are so quick to kind of tear each other down and to look towards other races in terms of their success and in terms of what they have, but never want to kind of look into the mirror ourselves. I love black folks, but that doesn't mean I don't have questions. Why are we always looking for the discount? Shoot, I ain't gonna lie, I'd be looking for the discount too. I mean, I don't know I'm saying this, I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. 
Why we always looking for the discount, honey? Okay, the the hookup. Okay. Now, so you've heard those questions, right? Now, when I first came across that, I hadn't heard it in its entirety, and I was reading a lot of the comments that were made. And folks, black folks being black folks, you know, my power to the people children, honey, got upset because they figured like these particular questions were stereotypical questions or had no 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 validity, no merit, and, you know, wanted to sit down here and get upset about it, you know. And a lot of them, you know, were taking political stances. Why come we not talking about why do we have black on black crime and, you know, all that kind of all that kind of I won't say craziness, but uh, the tone of the of the messages that suggested that they were angry because they felt that this could have been a little bit more serious or had a, a more serious tone. What are your thoughts about this? Three four seven two zero five nine one eight three. Just press the number one and let me know you have something to say, and I'll bring you right on in. So now, let me go here. Um, For me, I'm going to start with these questions because I think the questions are very valid. You know, some some of the stuff in there, you know, it's stuff that we understand between ourselves. You know, some of the questions were uh, cultural, you know, why are we always late, you know. Five minutes can't mean five. You know, we, we, we always joke about CP time. Why well, everybody got to be on color folks' time versus being on time, you know. Or, you know, the other racial epithet is how come we can't be on Japanese people time when we're trying to be in a hurry? You know, because the, the, the thing is they do everything very quick, very fast, and, and all of that. So that there becomes, you know, that's an insider thing, you know, with, with those questions. But in some of the questions, you know, how come we don't support black businesses? We go out of our way to support everybody else, but we won't support a black business and we give, you know, uh, second thoughts about it, you know. That's a very legitimate question, you know. Why is it that a person with natural hair is is considered to, to not be beautiful or whatever, you know, and it's an offense to have natural hair, you know, uh, which is really something. Now, here's the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the question, one of the questions in there was, why is it that a person has to be mixed to have long hair when it's their, when it's theirs naturally, but yet we got everybody trying to run out here and get all this goddamn weave to sit down there and make it and make you think they got they got twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty two inches of hair that they done sold in, glued in, or whatever, but yet you want to talk about the girl, honey, who grew her hair naturally, you know, my sisters. They're identical twins, honey. My sisters, they when they let their hair grow, they let it grow. Now one of one, one likes she likes to cut hers, you know, because it gets on her nerves. The other, she likes to let it grow and let it hang out until she can't stand it no more, you know. But nonetheless, they have long hair, long, thick, beautiful hair. Get it from my mama, you know, and carry it on. But you know. I guess because they big women and carrying on that you know that doesn't become a problem for them, or no, that's not that's not true because my baby sister, you know, uh, when she used to wear her hair in the fence roll and carrying on, folks used to thought that was a weave, would try to grab her hair. Girl, why you okay? She said, no, that's not no weave, that's my hair, you know, and carrying on. So, you know, why are we quick to think that because someone has long hair that it either they're mixed or, you know, it's fake. You know, or they got a weave in or whatever. When has weave and all that become such a standard of beauty? You know, it's one thing to have extensions and carrying on, but we keep saying we want to live in a world where we're keeping it real, but yet everything about the world is fake, okay? You got fake glasses. You got fake hair. You draw on eyebrows, okay? You extend your lip with a lip liner pencil, Okay, now we got Brazilian butt lifts. We got, you know, implants are carrying on. And this is not just women, honey, because men, there's um, uh, pectoral implants. They're doing Brazilian butt lifts on men, uh, you know, and carrying on. They're doing, uh, y'all talk to doctors and carrying on. The one boy wanted to look like a Ken dial, honey, so he got this done and that done. They even have... um, they got bicep implants. I didn't know that until I saw that particular show. 
you know. So we live in a world where you want to say you're real, but everything is fake. And then you criticize or talk about those who are real. <laughs> what do we do about that? Okay, come on in and chime in. 347-205-9183 is the number to call. I see there's a number of you online, honey. Just press the number one when you're ready to talk. Okay? I'm going to go here because let me get into the meat of this. And that there is this Star Spangled Banner, baby. Now here, they have some some little explanation um, that's supposed to be the quote unquote meaning of what uh, what this is supposed to be about and carrying on, okay. And then they broke this down into a kids version, okay. Which okay, if 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 it's meaning what. It, Excuse me. What it's supposed to mean? Then why is it that we have a children's version? Um, <laughs> you broke this down for kids, okay? Here we go. I'm going to first uh, give you the, the the verse, and then I'll give you the explanation, okay? So according to this, this is the first verse, the one that everybody knows. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Over the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? That's the first verse. That's the one that we all know, folks, fuck up, can't sing, sing it off key, you know. And ever since Whitney Houston did her little cutesy cutesy run at the end, everybody been trying to do that little run that she done did, okay? <laughs> now, According to these children, they say this is supposed to be the meaning of, of verse 1. It says here, wait a minute, first off, before I get into that, let me, let me go back and give you a little history. Because the Star Spangled Banner was actually a poem, okay? It was written by a man named Francis Scott Key, all right? Um, and this was written sometime, uh, uh, sometime uh, 1814, uh, somewhere up in there, okay? Uh, it became uh, officially the national anthem on March 3rd, uh, 1931 by President Herbert Hoover, who actually signed uh he signed an uh, an act into law. Okay. They say, what is the meaning of it? The meaning of the Star Spangled Banner lyrics reflects the patriotic feelings of Francis Scott Key when he saw the enormous U.S. flag flying over Fort Henry. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's go here because they say that this is what it's supposed to mean, supposedly. Okay. The first verse was supposed to mean the flag that flew over the fort was enormous. The commander of Fort Henry, import, uh, important George Armistead, had commissioned Mary Pickerskill to make a flag so large that the British would have no difficulty seeing it from a distance. The flag could be seen over several miles away, and Francis Scott Key was saying it could be seen in the last light before nightfall and the first light at dawn. The perilous fight, quote unquote, was the Battle of Baltimore during war during the War of eighteen twelve. The Star Spangled Banner was streaming over the ramparts battlements of the fort. The rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting used alliteration to describe the cannon fire pounding from the British Navy and the cannons firing from the fort, one of the ships named with the rocket launcher. Excuse me, armed with the rocket launcher. The angry red glow from the cannon fire enabled Americans to see the Star Spangled Banner still flying. The British had not captured the fort and hoisted the Union Jack. 
the Star Spangled Banner was waving over the land of the free, a reference to the fight for independence that had resulted in the freedom of the tyranny from the British. The Home of the Brave lyric reflects the heroic ep- uh, exploits of Americans to defend their country. The War of 1812 was proudly known as the Second War for Independence, meaning uh, that was the meaning for the lyrics for verse one, supposedly. And I say supposedly because I have reservations on this. Now, here is verse two. Now, man, I said there are four verses to this song. Here's verse two. <laughs> On the shore dimly seen through the midst of the deep, where the foe's haughty host in dread silence reposes, which uh, what is which the breeze over the towering steep, as it fitfully blows, half conceals, half discloses. Now it catches the gleam of the morning's first beam In full glory reflected now shines in the stream Tis the star-spangled banner Oh, long may it wave over the land of the free And the home of the brave (laughs) Now they say that Francis Scott Key was describing the perspective from the land As Americans looked out into the hazy images of the British ships The foe Haughty host lyric describes the vessels of the arrogant British. The lyrics, dread silence reposes, express the views of the ships that look quiet and still as if resting, but are actually a hive of terrifying activity. Francis Scott Key describes the high vertical position of the flag over Fort Henry in lyrics over the towering steep and the movement of the flag blowing in the wind, concealing then. Revealing the Star Spangled Banner. The sun comes out and clearly shines on the Star Spangled Banner in full glory lyrics, and expresses the grandeur of the flag and a religious connotation. Francis Scott Key almost makes the Star Spangled Banner lyrics cheer using the patriotic words, "Tis the Star Spangled Banner, oh may it wave, oh long may it wave, over the land of the free and the home of the brave." Now. Now, one of the reasons why I'm having reservation about this so-called explanation because it says that he was sitting up here looking out as just happened to see the flag, and he wrote this particular poem. So how is it that this is supposed to mean all of this if he just saw the fucking flag? He wasn't there fighting in the war. You know, so whatever. Okay. Here is the third verse, and the third verse is the verse that gets folks, Okay. Wait a minute. I just hit I just hit the wrong button. Okay. Here's the verse that gets it. <laughs> and where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge can save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now, mind you, this is written in 1814, honey. We're still slaves at this particular point. You know, the Emancipation Proclamation wasn't signed until 1863. So we are still slaves at this particular point. However, they're trying to say, listen to this. Francis Scott Key describes the British arrogant and boastful in the lyrics, that band who so vauntingly swore. He is lifting his anger at the British with the foul footsteps pollution lyric inferring that the British poisoned the ground on which they walked, but the poison and corruption had been washed away by the blood of the British. Mm-hmm. The star Spring abandoned lyric, the hireling, refers to the British use of mercenaries, German Hassans, uh, in the American War of Independence. The star Spring abandoned lyric, and, um, and slave, is a direct reference to the British practice of Impressment 
kidnapping American seamen and forcing them into service on British man of war ships. This was an important cause of the war in 1812. Francis Scott Key then described the Star Spangled Banner as a symbol of triumph over all adversity. <laughs> ah, really? Now, here's the final verse. Oh, thus it be ever when freemen shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation, blessed with victory and peace. May the heavens rescue land, praise the power that have made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause is just, and this be our motto in God we trust. And the star-spangled banner and triumph shall wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Right. Now, according to this, they say that pride and patriotism is the theme of the last verse. Francis Scott Key uses emotive words such as freemen, home, blessed, victory, triumph, conquer, and peace in the Star Spangled Banner lyrics. He was deeply a religious man, and his words reflect his belief that God was on the side of Americans. He refers to the American nation and fighting for a just cause. The words in God we trust combines the concept of religion and patriotism and are believed to be the origin of the official motto of the United States in God we trust, the unofficial motto of e purpose unum, which was adopted when the great seal of the United States was created in 1784. <laughs> so there you have all four verses, okay? However, uh, it is said that Francis Scott Key, honey, was a white supremacist. That he was a slave owner at one point. Wait a minute. I, I, let me find that. Because... Oftentimes, it was said that he had written that out of protest because they were feeling as though a lot of African Americans at the time, and even though they were enslaved, some felt as though that in some regards, some slaves were being treated better than black folks, okay? And this was said that this was, this was written in protest of all of that. And I'm trying to, wait a minute, I got to find this article. Hold on. Because... Um, that there is what's going on, going on. If you Google Francis Scott Key, honey, he's the first child that comes up. Ain't that nothing? <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Here we go. Let's see. I think I just found it. I think I just found it. Uh, hold on. Give me a second. Okay. Uh, what, okay, this is, this is a perspective article, and I'm going to read this um, by Mr. Sean King. And this was written on yesterday, as a matter of fact, August 29th. Oh, I'm sorry, not, uh, Monday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, he starts off, he says, I like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. In a, in a dream world, the bread is super soft, like the wonder bread of my childhood, and the sandwich will have crunchy peanut butter, strawberry jam, and a cup of cold milk to go with it. Maybe PB&J isn't your favorite sandwich, but I want you to imagine your favorite comfort food for a moment. Maybe it's a hamburger, maybe a piece of pie or a fruit smoothie, whatever it is. Just imagine yourself enjoying the very best version of your favorite food, your very favorite food. It's perfectly delicious. Then imagine yourself glancing upon the wall and seeing that the restaurant had a score of C- minuses on their health inspection. Then you go into the restroom and it's filthy. A man emerges from the stall having followed by the foulest odor you've ever smelled in your life, and you notice he's still wearing his apron from the kitchen. Then the unthinkable happens. The man who made your comfort food walks right past the sink and doesn't even wash his hands. <laughs> you leave the restaurant in disgust. As you stand outside, even... Uh, without even finishing your meal, you see the you see the world's largest rat dart from up under a gaping hole by the restaurant door. Now you are completely undone. You are call the health department 
and post an angry one-star review on Yelp level undone. You don't even want your money back. You just want to get the hell away from there. Your new dream come true will have to have will have to be. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Your your new dream come true would be to have one of those men in black wands waved over your face that so you could forget the implication of the meal you just ate. <laughs> Would you go back to that restaurant? Of course you wouldn't. To me right now, the Star Spangled Banner is that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I used to love it, but now I regret ever going anywhere near it. The man who made it, who uses uh, uses the bathroom in his apron and doesn't wash his hands, is the author of the National Anthem, Francis Scott Key, who, as it turns out, was a terrible human being. Now that I have learned the truth about our national anthem and its author, I'll never stand up for it again. First off, the song was originally written as a poem. It didn't become our national anthem until 1931, which was 117 years after Key wrote it. Most of all, most of us have no true idea what in the hell we've been hearing or singing all these years, but it turns out Key's poem actually has a third stanza which few of us have ever heard. In it, he openly celebrates the murder of slaves. Yes, really. Okay, he goes to quote that line again. I've already read that to y'all once. I'm not going to read it again. While it has always been known that that song was written during American slavery and that when those words about this nation being the land of the free didn't apply to the millions who had been in bondage, Few of us had any idea that the song itself was rooted in the celebration of slavery and the murder of Africans in America who were being hired by the British military to give them strength not only in the War of 1812 but in the, in the Battle of Fort Henry, Meck Henry, in 1814. These black men were called the Corps of Colonial uh, Marines, and they served validly for the British military. He despised them. He was glad to see them experience terror and death in war, to the point that he wrote a poem about it. That poem is now our national anthem. When I was fundamentally reject, uh, while I fundamentally reject the notion that anyone could own another human, other human beings was either good, moral, or decent, Francis Scott Key left absolutely no doubt that he was a stone-cold bigot. He came from generations of plantation-owning bigots. They got wealthy off of it. Key, a district attorney of Washington, fought for slavery and against abolitionists every chance he got. Even when Africans in D.C. were injured or murdered, he stood strong against injustice for them. He openly spoke racist words against Africans in America. Key said that they were, quote, a distinct and inferior race of people, which all experience proves to be the greatest evil that afflicts a community, end quote. Mm. Damn. Okay, that just hit me. It's funny. While San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin uh, Kaepernick had refused to stand for the national anthem because of the overflowing abundance of modern-day injustice in America, he has helped bring to light the fact that this song and its author are deeply rooted in the violent white supremacy. I would never stand for the Star Spangled Banner another day in my damn life. I don't care where I am or who's watching. The statue of this of the racist Cecil Rhodes, which stood tall in South America, excuse me, in South Africa as a as a painful relic from white supremacy of, until March of 2015, was finally removed once and for all. It should have never been erected. It should it shouldn't have been removed. Uh, it should have been removed a long time ago. Student leaders made it clear that they had had enough. Like uh, Kaepernick, I've had enough injustice in America, and I've had enough anthems written by big, by bigots. Colin Kaepernick has has provided a spark. The Star, Star Spangled Banner should never have been made into our national anthem. That President Woodrow Wilson, widely thought to be one of the m- most bigoted presidents ever elected, Shows it as our national anthem is painfully telling it telling as well. We must do away with it like South Africans did away with their monument to Cecil Rhodes. 
We must do away with it, like South Carolina did with the Confederate flag over the state house. Of course, removing the culture of white supremacy does not necessarily remove its effects, but we must simultaneously and passionately address both. I'm joining Colin Kaepernick, who joined in with the spirit of Rosa Parks by standing up for our rights by sitting down. I hope you join us. Okay? Now, having said all that, that's a mouthful, ain't it? Now, again, going back to understanding this, see, the children want to sit down there and make a sound as if, you know, his whole idea of, of, of this song, honey, was about against the British or whatever. But no, again, being that this was in slavery times or whatever, remember, we as a people, honey, we were still considered three-fifths of a person. We had no validity. We had nothing. We were not even considered people. We were still considered property at that time. And for them to say for this line to go up in this song that most Americans don't know about, okay, and to know that he's been celebrating slavery and carrying on has a significant impact on the world. And I'm telling y'all, it has really, really done us in. We have been duped, baboozled, hoodwinked, honey, all this time. I have never been one who liked the, who liked the, Salvation, uh, uh, the Salvation Army. Wrong one. The Star Spangled Banner. Uh, however, uh, it has been very, 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 very in my spirit, you know, just compelling in my spirit, not to even be bothered with it. You know, I never like singing a song. And, of course, now because, you know, in order to show your patriotism, that's the song everybody wants to sing. I like America the Beautiful myself. I've always thought that that was a, uh, a better song. It's peaceful. It, it, um, it's very inclusive. It talks about all the colors of that that's going on, the mountains, red, gear, the bomb, um, uh, purple, uh, uh, purple mountains, majesty, the above the fruited plains, okay? Um, that's been just a beautiful song. And so now we have the national anthem up for question simply because this young man decided to to take a protest, and it's peaceful. This is what I wrote on Facebook, and um, for those of you who were, who were on my wall, um, you, you would have seen this. I said, I am Big Meech, and I approve this peaceful protest. In fact, I will not recite the Pledge of Allegiance anymore until we, as an entire United States of America, demonstrate that we live by the words that is supposed to be our creed. I love my country. I support our troops and have dedicated uh, those who have dedicated their lives to fight and protect for our freedoms and our independence. I'm a Native American with African ancestry, and it is disrespectful and disenfranchising and dehumanizing for my country to not include me and my contributions to this world and the basic freedoms, rights, and privileges given to everyone else including new citizens who come and declare this country as their home. It is a travesty and should be considered treason that those who have fought for this country and for, and for all that, makes, that, that many take for granted, for them to come home and are denied the very rights, freedoms, and privileges that they have defended and protected. Okay? In addition, to a lot of the crimes that we have at the hands of those who have been sworn, who have been uh, there to, to serve and protect. They have sworn their duties and their lives to, to serve and protect the people. Okay, we're having too much of this going on. And for this young man just to sit down and say, I'm not standing up for that because those words mean nothing. They mean nothing. How can we sit down here and, and recite? It, it means nothing. It's not like going to church. Y'all know how that is. When you sit down there, you go to church, and the pastor's saying this and the pastor's saying that, but yet, as soon as church is over, he cussing like a sailor. He's doing this, he's doing that. It has no merit. It has no foundation. It has nothing. This becomes a whole bunch of BS. And so then what do you do? Do you take him at his word or what? We are in a country that has completely fortified the thought of do as I say, not as I do. Okay? 
we are constantly looking for folks to sit down and to give us the 411 on everything. We want them to give us the 411. We want to be in the know. As soon as we get the information, everybody has an opinion on what they should do, how they should do it, why they didn't do it this way, and and this, that, and the other. At the same time, we do not take our own advice for the most part. We do not sit back and uh, police ourselves. We don't govern ourselves. We're looking for somebody else to do it, and we always look for other people to blame. So here, uh, this man uh, taking his time to do what he does, and he's willing to take the consequences for it. See, this is the other part of this that I think is absolutely phenomenal. He is willing to sit up there and say if it means him being cut from the team, if it means that, you know, a lot of the endorsement companies or whatever won't come forward, um, and, and, and use him to endorse their products or whatever, he leaves out on money. He says, and then he said in the press conference, he said then he, then it would be well worth it because he's not going to take heed to that song until times have changed and, and the country, you know, it becomes in a better place that we actually start to live by those words. So I stand with that. I stand with that a whole hundred percent. I've been saying that, you know, for a little piece of time now, you know, in 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 similar protests and take that across the board with how we govern ourselves in this life and and dealing with other people. I have always, always, always said that we cannot sit down here and preach one thing and do another. Your actions, honey, have to be a reflection of what it is that you say you live by. And this is not to say you're going to be perfect and this that you won't make mistakes or as the church folks say, backslide. At the same time, you know what your character is, you know what the, what, what the content of who you are is all about, mostly. And if you're not going to sit down here and to uh, allow yourself to be a beacon of light, allow your life to be a testament to what you believe, then it's all in vain. And so how else could you, uh, could you get somebody to believe you to want to be around you, even want to be bothered with you, because it becomes that you're just living a lie. And most of us say that we don't like liars, right? You don't like being around a liar. You you know when that some somebody come around, every time they open up their mouth, honey, it's a it's a big story, and you'd rather not deal with it. Why? Because it's negative energy. It's it's, it's vampiric, you know, uh, and it comes to suck the blood out of everything. And if that's the case, child, why do I want you around me to drain me? And I'm trying to do something with my life. Why? You know, why? And that's all that you do. See, so now, now let, me, let me put a proviso here. Because oftentimes there are, there are those days where we have our days where, you know, being human, you may think everybody's trying to attack you or everything is sound and negative or whatever, or because somebody is not trying to co-sign your brand of bullshit, you may think that everything is negative. When And when you come into your right mind and sit down and think about it, you know, there are times where folks really have your best interest at heart. And you come around and say, you know what, what they said, I may not have liked it, but what they said has some merit. I may not agree with it all or whatever, but I get where they're coming from. And if you get to that point, then you're good. But if you can't get to that point and or you have that person around you to every time they come around, it's like pig pen from 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 Charlie Brown. Every time you see him, honey, it is a cloud of dust. Okay? Every time this person come around, honey, it, the, the light just goes out. It seems like this darkness just comes into the day of room. The, the mood changes or whatever. It's because they are poison. They are poison and they are toxic, and that there's what this is. Uh, peaceful protesting, everybody who – now get this. The children who said they're mad at this football player, why are you spending your money? You know, spent your money, went to the store to buy his jersey so that you could come on Facebook and burn it. That's dumb. That is so dumb. Because if that's your protest, why are you wasting money? Y'all could have pulled that money and put that money into the into the kitty. You know, y'all could have did something with that money to say, okay, in protest of him, 
you know, we're going to put this into the relief fund for the soldiers. Or uh, y'all see the veterans hospitals and stuff are having a damn hell of a time trying to, trying to get the veterans and stuff together. How come y'all did not go down there and say, you know, we support you and this, that, and the other? Put that money into that particular, in, into that account. You know, why is it, or, or uh, why have you know, taken and gone down to, to the policeman's athletic league, you know, so that we could, re- re- I don't even know if y'all remember that. Do y'all remember that? It was called PAL, and that's where we had a lot of the police officers who used to come into the community. We had the Blue Pigs. They would come visit the singing cops and things. They had a little band and all that. They had a little athletic department where they were engaging in, you know, sport basketball and baseball and football and a little tennis and, you know, those kind of outdoor activities that were team sports to help folks and to teach folks how to engage with one another and carry on. We had those kinds of things when I was a kid, and it seemed to have fallen by the wayside. So now instead of you just wanting to spend your money to burn a fucking jersey, why did not take that money and pull it together? Because it was it was more than one, you know. And those jerseys are not cheap, honey. Even if you start off with the cheap ones at $35, that's the real low end. You know, now if you get the real authentic one that's that's NFL approved or whatever, then you're spending at least sixty, seventy five dollars and up. You know? So now that this just becomes a whole bit to do and, and and uh I'm having a problem, you know, with how folks decide to want to respond. You know, I believe in freedom of speech and care. No, I'm not gonna say that they don't have a right to say what they say. I'm just having a problem with how they want to do it, you know. And maybe they said the same thing about him. You know, they have a problem with how he chose to, to, to have his protest or whatever. But it was peaceful. It was peaceful. He didn't destroy no property. He wasn't sitting down here bad off on anybody. He just sat down. Okay, I like how the article said, "Honey, he took did what he did and took a vote to park stand." Honey, vote to stand. Honey, honey, I'm tired. And she sat down on that bus because her feet was hurting. And she wasn't getting up. Okay? And so she took on to the consequences of all that. What, what was that meaning and carrying on? So that's where we are with that. So how many of y'all got something to say? Come on in. 347-205-9183. 347-205-9183. Let me take a commercial break right here because I got to get something on my throat. <laughs> And I will be right back, okay? Choosing art and custom framing is a personal experience. And at Eric's I've Been Framed, our consultants work closely with you to bring your vision to life, leaving you with more than a picture. We create showpieces and heirlooms for your family to enjoy for generations. Come and experience our creativity for yourself. Eric's I've Been Framed is located at 16527 Illinois Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. For more information, call 313-861-9263. Decreated Boutique offers the most unique selection of high-quality handicrafted infant and children custom outfits, tutus, blankets, headbands, cough diapers, women's handbags, and much more. We're conveniently located at 19480 Livernoy Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, on the famous Avenue of Fashion Shopping District. For more information, contact us at 313-744-9002. Decreated Boutique, a one-stop destination for fashionable families. Pharaohstreasurebox.com, a quality online Detroit mobile business. Custom, affordable, high-quality, handcrafted art, jewelry, gifts, and accents for you, your event, home, office, or business. Contact Peter Jackson, Artistic Director, at 248-688-5178. 248-688-5178. Pharaohstreasurebox.com, embracing a fusion of cultures and making art beautifully affordable. All right, and we are back. Again, a number to call in is 347-205-9183. And I'm sitting up here now trying to get through the rest of this, but I just got um, an emergency text. So I may have to cut this short, child. Um, shit. Okay, yeah, there's something going down at the J-O-B. Um, 
And I, I'm going to have to take a call. You know what? Uh, I don't know how long that's going to be. I was going to say I'll play a song, and then I'll come back. But it's already 2.22. Um, I'll do there. Yeah, let me do this. Um, I'm going to cut this here because I guess y'all like the sound of my voice. Nobody wants to, to, to give. The, don't be scared to give your opinion, honey. But I guess because we're on the air, a lot of people, see, dealing with these kinds of subjects, a lot of people may not want to go public. You know, we'll talk about it in our homes and, and carrying on with our coworkers and all that, you know, behind closed doors. But I guess to take a stance, honey, it's a little bit much. I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. And it's okay. I'm not going to push you um, because I'm not. But what I am going to do, because I got this text, let me, I have to call, um, call these children here uh, and find out what the hell is going on. And then in that, I will uh, get back with you guys in a few moments. Until then, I'm going to let you guys um, uh, ponder on this, okay, because we, we dealt with a lot that deals with uh, identifying um, how we can get this conversation started with the uh, we're dealing with race really dealing with race in our country uh with the 32 questions white folks for have for white people you know is that a good start can we start there and actually make some things happen if they were to sit down and to answer the questions honestly you know can that is that the right direction of the dialogue what about internally how can we you know we got a lot of people say it's time to build a nation and this that and the other um um, and all of that, but yet some of the questions that were asked in this particular montage, you know, may seem to go unanswered. You know, are we, do you think we could ever get to the point where we can really have someone uh, to answer them, you know, and, and to be real and to, and to get that discussion started and then to accept the answers because sometimes if we, and, and, as long as the answers are serious, you know, we want to make sure that folks are serious with them and not just wanting to go in for the laugh or the joke all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, let, you know, we'll, we, we'll talk. Um, and let's get that discussion started, okay? Uh, in that regard, let me give you guys that. Um, please, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or wish to, to write me, you want to put in the dear Big Meech letter, uh, email me at bigmeech at dishingtea.com. That's Big Meech, B-I-G-M-E-A-C-H, at bigmeech.com. And I'll be more than happy to uh, have your letters and stuff come to me there um, and then to take, to take this on. So let's get this discussion started and popping, okay? Let's get it on and popping and carrying on. Let me do a special birthday shout out. Uh, let's see, Gregory Powell, um, a former coworker of mine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Angela Collins. Another coworker of mine, uh, Robin Blitch. Is that your last name, Robin? I think that's right. Uh, all of them are over there at the Western Atlanta Airport, and they all had birthdays um, yesterday and the day before. And then today, uh, my friend Rusty Ross up in Saucatuck, Michigan, over there at uh, Blue Star uh, Motel. Rusty, happy birthday to you and uh, all of that. So having said all of those things, honey, you may finish your crumpets, darling, because the tea has been dished. And you've been dishing tea, darling, <laughs> with big meat. If you love me, tell a friend, honey. If you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this. One way, shape, style, form, or fashion, honey. This thing that I'm doing will move forward once again. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys on a note. Let me give you this. Um, come on, Selena, take us out of here.
battery goes dead, everything can come to a stop. Don't take a chance on getting stranded. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and get your battery tested free of charge. If your battery does need to be replaced, O'Reilly Auto Parts can help you find the exact super start battery that fits your car or truck at a guaranteed low price. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. 